Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do a layout in our sketchbook using my brand new sketchbook floozy stencils. And this is the nine by 12 set. There are four different sets. So uh, you could choose a size that fits your needs the best or um, they do have some specials. If you buy two or more sets, you get 15% off and there's free shipping over 40 through February. So if you are seeing this when the video comes out, check it out um, and then you can grab that deal. Go in with friends or something. Um, or you can use rulers and stuff you already have. You don't need to buy anything, uh, but it's there if you need it. So what I'm doing here is just kind of figuring out how I want my page to be laid out. I rarely use the stencil just as it is. I love to group the cells together in different ways to create the layouts that I want. And I wanted these stencils to be versatile like that. So you could use the outside of the stencil, the inside of the stencil. You could put boxes together, use one shape, use many shapes, or take the inside pieces. So all those holes have the plastic pieces included in the stencil. So you could just lay those out kind of like a quilt and trace around them if you want to do that. So now that I've got my layout down, I'm just going over it with a black pen. So you can kind of see how I, um, how I ended up putting these together. But yeah, it's, uh, if you look at the stencil, not just the only, the one way it comes, which you can turn it four ways and get four different, designs and flip it over, turn it four ways, get four different designs, but you have an infinite amount of designs. Once you consider that you can combine boxes, you can use the inside cutouts from the stencil and you can shift it around as you go to make it fit exactly what you're doing. So even if you don't use a nine by 12 sketchbook, you have like a 11 by 14 or you have an eight by eight or you have a six by nine, you can still use any of the stencils, just move them, slide them over, get exactly the layout you want. And uh, so there you can kind of see how we turn that stencil into that layout. I just wanted to share that in case you were kind of confused as to how you can use them. There's so many ways to use them. That's just one way to use them. I'm starting off sketching in the largest box here. There was, uh, I'm using photos from the location where I'll be having a workshop in France in May. And I thought it'd be really fun to get psyched up for the workshop, well, more psyched up, I'm already psyched up, but it would kind of be fun just to kind of um, cut my teeth on some of these photos from Uptrek. And uh, this is the resort where we're going to be staying. And I thought this would be a really fun um, painting to do. And so I loved how the building is kind of nestled into the landscape, kind of like a castle, right? It's kind of very fairy tale looking. And then you've got all these beautiful pastures around it. It's, I love the countryside and um, I just thought it was so pretty. So uh, that's what that's what I'm gonna start with first. Now I'm using some Hansi yellow light. You could also use lemon yellow. It's any cool yellow. And then I added in yellow ochre. And um, if you're not used to painting with yellow ochre or raw sienna, it's a beautiful color. Both of those colors will give you a very similar effect, but they seem to sweeten a scene in my opinion. It kind of harmonizes and just makes things kind of golden. You know when you do like you go and take photographs at. Um, the golden hour, like an hour, like half hour before sun, sunset or a half hour after sunrise, you get that beautiful glow to your, to your pictures. You take portraits that they're just, everything is just so pretty. Um, that's what I feel like yellow ochre or raw sienna will do when you add it into your mixes. So if you, if you're not familiar with using those colors, maybe it's not a color you gravitate to because maybe you're like, oh, it's kind of drab, it's kind of neutral. It's not very exciting. Try mixing it in with some of your other colors. I think you'll find that it adds a beautiful warmth, kind of like if you're painting on natural white watercolor paper, as opposed to bright white watercolor paper. Um, I prefer natural white generally. So I think that's kind of part of it too, why I like that yellow ochre. It's just a very, it's a very soft light, kind of like using soft light bulbs in your home. It's just, I, I feel like it, it sweetens everything, makes everything look a little bit more cozy and, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It just, it's just a nice look. I encourage you to try it. Um, so I'm painting in with, this is my basic palette that I'll be taking with me to France. Um, I'm using a little bit of Potter's Pink on the buildings. And sometimes I will add colors to a palette if I know I'm going somewhere in particular. Potter's Pink and Cerulean Blue are a couple of colors I recently added to my, my plein air palette. And um, I'm really liking them. I like the, the Potter's Pink because it's granular and, if, and I like to paint uh, at the coast a lot. So it's wonderful for capturing the texture of rocks and capturing the texture of sand and also toning down skies when you've got the um, really overcast, misty skies like we have in Maine a lot. Um, so I found those to be just gorgeous. And Cerulean has a beautiful granulation quality and it's a perfect um, sky color for Maine. Ultramarine Blue is also very useful. Um, 
if you look at those pans that are at the bottom of my palette, they're like skinny and long. I use the portable painter for my travel palette. That is, once I tried that, I don't think I have gone back to any other palette with frequency. I have a little tiny one that I keep in a fanny pack for my hiking palette because I don't want to be carrying a bunch of stuff when I'm hiking but I do like to have the have my supplies with me so I have a little like I guess they call it a cross body bag now uh with some water brushes and one of those little um wooden tiny palettes but for the most part I like my portable painter I don't feel like I am lacking for mixing space or anything but the one thing I do feel like I'm, I was, did feel like I was lacking was the space to be able to put a big brush in and when I'm traveling, I, I use a couple round travel brushes and I use a, a three quarter inch angle brush. Like, um, you know, it's like a flat, it's like a wide flat, but it's an angle. And I, and I find that to be so useful for skies and um, uh, water, things like that. And I can fit those in those slim pans that go in the little, um, that little old brush holder from the portable painter. So the slim pa pans came out recently. Um, you can buy them, I think you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at portablepainter.com. Um, I'm not sure if Blick has them. I think they might sell the portable painter setup with the, with those pans with it. Don't quote me on that, but I'm telling you, they are wonderful. They don't fit the Cotman Sketcher Box, if you have that one. I have tried it, but they do fit the Cotman Studio set. So if you have like the bigger Cotman sets, um, those bigger palettes, they do fit in that channel where the brush is supposed to go in that as well. So I just wanted to let you know, because I did try it in a bunch of different palettes to see what it was compatible with, because those slim pans are great. They hold about a half pan of paint, I think, maybe a little bit more, but the best thing is you can get a flat brush in there without risking damaging it, trying to get into a half pan. So as you can see, the colors I've used here, I've used uh, Doxazine Violet, I've used Quinacridone Rose, I've used those to kind of... Um, deepen and brighten and warm up colors and I I think it just makes such a pretty brown when you take the burnt sienna quin rose doxazine violet it's dark it's rich it's um it's kind of sweetened a bit with the rose it's just a pretty combination uh, and I encourage you to mix some colors that you're not used to putting together and see what they will do at this point, I'm going to let this painting dry and I'm going to move to another painting on the grid. And that's another reason I like to do the gridded layouts with watercolor because while one layer is drying on one painting, I skip to the other one. I skip to another one, work on that for a while. While that's drying, I skip to another one. Now, I used to, when I used to sell my work a lot more and I do the sidewalk art festivals, um, I used to work on like six paintings at once. And while one was drying, I'd skip to the next one, work on that for a bit. When that's drying, skip to the next one. work, And I'd have like, my table would have a bunch of different paintings going. Um, but now I'm not really that interested in selling my work, but I love keeping a sketchbook. So being able to grid out my pages like this is great because I don't have to be like, okay, I've got this one page drying. I have to flip. I have to turn the page and work on another one, but then you end up smearing your work. So this allows me to have, I can use a bigger sketchbook and I can have a bunch of different paintings going at once. So that's another reason I really like this gridding method. Plus I feel like not everything has to be a masterpiece if I'm only working on a small portion of the page. Things can, they'll look really great when they're all together, but not one of the single illustrations has to be fantastic. Um, the, the sum is greater, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. <laughs> uh, thank you. A couple of you told me what the actual quote was. Aristotle, I think, or maybe that's um, misquoted. Uh, but in Satchat, I was trying to remember that that uh that phrase the whole is greater than the sum of the parts and that's how i feel with these gridded layouts plus you can really get a feel for a, a place or a scene when you're doing this um if you're going to go plein air painting somewhere and you can't decide what to paint or where to stop to sit have a grid out some pages before you go so then you can do a bunch of little pictures and nothing has to be too precious and you can just stop wherever you're interested you don't have to wander the grounds and find the perfect thing because you're going to be spending all day on it and that's what i really love Take a photo if you want a really um, a really good representation of an area. Paint it back in the studio, but when you're there to paint out in the wild, sit and start painting, right? You could take a photo and you could bring that home with you, but you know, you'll know you remember the area so much better if you just kind of sit and paint. Um, I was having a lot of fun with the perspective on this one because I love how your eye is drawn into the tower and it kind of, um, I like to kind of bring the eye around because if you look at the, the first painting we did, you could see the tower from a distance. Now we're seeing the tower kind of from the inside or from the little kind of patio area of the resort and or the um, the property. And so I like showing though kind of like a more broad scene and then showing a more intimate scene. I think it's kind of it's kind of fun to juxtapose those and also give greater context 
about what we're painting. So again, another another great reason. It's kind of like um, if you read graphic novels or comic books, you'll have you you can have so many different um, little pictures that can take you into a scene and, and tell you the story. Now this is uh, the water soluble graphite that is not as water soluble as I'd hoped, but I think it might just, I'm wondering if water soluble graphite gets less water soluble with age because I've had this pencil for a long time and I noticed it didn't fully dissolve when I added water to it. And this is like a graphitone, um, a Derwent graphitone pencil from like the 90s, I think. I don't use it too often, so it's still pretty long, but like the wrapper is totally worn off. And I had a, f I think I had a few different hardnesses of that. I used to use it in the studio a lot when I was teaching, and that was around, oh, that was around 99, 2000, 2001. Let's see. 2001, 2002. I closed my studio in 2004. So early 2000s, I was using those a lot in classes. Um, and they are fun. They're a lot of fun. But I like how when you mix water soluble graphite with watercolors, you get this um, kind of granulating, moody, earthy effect. And actually getting like a graphite block, Derwent has the um, Derwent XL graphite blocks. And if you just spot like the soft I think it's called soft gray or soft black. Um, you can get it open stock. You don't have to buy a whole set. And then you just put that in like a little dish next to your palette. You could start mixing that in with colors and get that effect, get a really beautiful granulating um, grade tone to your paints if you wanted to. So you could kind of play with the granulation. If you haven't really gone, gone for that, um, that trend or movement, you can kind of play with that a bit and um, see if you like it before you invest a lot. Now that white that I use there, you can't really see it on my palette because it's off camera, but in one of the uh, those little slim pan areas, I have one of the ones that's divided. I broke off a piece of Derwent uh, Ink Tense Antique White block and I put that in there because that is super opaque. Look at the highlight on that tower in the middle picture. It's so opaque and it rewets like a dream and it's very inexpensive. It's like it's like a solid white gouache that actually rewets and is as opaque as a gouache. So it's like it's like um bleed proof white but in a really well rewettable stick. So highly recommend that. Now here, look at this. I'm trying to get the graphite off of the stick with a wet brush and it is not happening, folks. It's like, whoa. I think that's when I realized this really is not rewetting. So I took a piece of tape and I stuck it down to my silicone mat and I scribbled on the tape and then I was able to pick up the water soluble graphite to um, to paint with. And you can see it's got a really pretty texture. Now for this section right here, I thought it would be fun to do the tower again. I guess I'm obsessed with this tower. I'm gonna have to, I can't wait to see that in real life. I'm gonna have to, I hope we can go in it. I hope that it's like not, um, like off limits to guests because I'm just so fascinated with that. I just, it's so princessy, you know? I always wanted um, a house, like when, you know, when you're a kid and you're dreaming of like what your dream house will be. And I was one of those houses that had like the, like that, I guess it'd be like a Victorian style house that would have like that turret that was, that was built with like big bay windows to sit in. I live in a ranch, friends. I live in like the, the anti-Victorian house. <laughs> I live in the most American house there is. Um, it's a great little house, but yeah, no turrets. <laughs> I should build one. I should build an addition. Have a ranch with a turret on the end. <laughs> that would be funny. I'm not going to do that. Um, so now I'm going in. I'm adding some more of the graphite. It's really fun to do a monochrome sometime. Just, uh, just play with shades of gray. It's, and honestly, if you are strapped for cash and you're like, Lindsay, I have no money to make art. I literally have no money. You can dig around the junk drawer and find a pencil and go in some printer paper and, um, or the back of a shopping bag or whatever you can find, hopefully nothing glossy, something that's got like a little bit of grit to it and just sketch with that because you can get realism with graphite. You can get, you can get tonal range with graphite you'll probably be a better artist by limiting to graphite for as long as you can because you are going to have the uh the contrast down you are going to know how to make a lot with a little and um it's really helpful so let's take a peek at these pictures where they are now i did add some white to that one on the bottom and uh yeah, this is kind of where we're at, but I wasn't quite happy with that. There you can see the other side of the page that I was just protecting with a mat so that I didn't spill anything on it. 
and I was thinking it just needs a little bit more. I wasn't sure if I was going to add anything to it, but after kind of standing back and looking at it for a bit, I thought, you know, I think I'm going to go and add some pen. Um, I took those that video there that because I was kind of afraid I was going to mess it up, but I don't like to let fear of messing something up stop me from doing more to a painting if I think it needs more. And I really felt like it needed more. So I've got a couple of waterproof pens here. I've got the um, Derwent Line Maker, and I believe this is an point. Oh, eight. Uh, I like to use the thicker nibs when I'm using watercolor paper because um, I find that watercolor paper, especially arches, and that's what the sketchbook's made out of. Artsy Rosie on Etsy makes these beautiful sketchbooks if you want to get one like mine. This is the 9 by 12 Cold Press Arches book. Um, but I use the point eight either microns or Derwent line makers or whatever brand you prefer. I like that because it doesn't wear it down. The arches paper can almost be like sandpaper on those really fine nibs, like those like a 0.03 micron or a 0.01 or a those will just get gobbled right up by that paper. So if you use the larger nib, like a 0.08, then you can use it on its edge and you can still get those fine lines, but it doesn't damage the nib. It doesn't wear it down as fast. So that would be my advice if you're working on a, a cold press arches or a rough watercolor paper to preserve it a little bit longer. And the other pen there I had I used for those thick lines is a, um, I think it's called License to Quill. It's a pen by Jane Davenport, which I believe you used to be able to get them at Michael's, but I think now you have to get them on janedavenport.com. It's a waterproof black uh, brush pen. It's lovely. And there are other waterproof black brush pens that you can find by many different companies. This was just kind of fun to hold because it looks cute. Like all of her supplies look so cute. Um, so yeah, it's fun. I, it's actually lasted really long. I'm, I'm very impressed with the quality of that pen and how long it's lasted me. Not that I use it all the time, but I have used it quite a bit. I, and I definitely definitely feel like I've got my use out of it. And I really feel like this painting here on the bottom benefited from having the line work. It was just really a little too squishy. And uh, one thing I didn't feel like was defined was these like uh, rows of trees. And I love just putting these vertical lines in for these trees. I think it's really effective. It almost reminds me of an illustration or like a storybook illustration, but kind of one of the more modern storybook illustrations. It's almost like modern vintage. They're modern illustrations that kind of look like they could have been done in the 50s. I like that look and I think that worked out really well with that bank of trees, in my opinion anyway. And just take a second, look at that white. Look how bright that white was. That was that Derwent Inktense block. And you can also get it in a pan paint, like in a little like half pan, if you wanna just put a half pan in your palette. It's the same product, but it's I think it's a little bit more economical when you buy the blocks, cause I think you get a little bit more media that way. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with how this came out. I enjoyed, doing this project so much and I'm really enjoying using the stencils. It makes, I love gritting my pages. I've been doing it for a while, um, but this makes it a lot quicker. But of course you can use a ruler, you can use a T-square, you can use compass for round circles, uh, round shapes. You don't have to buy this, but if you want it, there it is. And there's the free shipping offer going on now. And I'll put all the details in the video description. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.